in order to work on this side it's going to be easier for me and for you because <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm right-handed to turn it round you know so I'll, I'll be working on it like this and I can see things a bit more easily so once again we're going to wet that brush um, that lobe sorry <coughs> and again have your picture have your picture turned round to match so now <coughs> we'll be looking at this grayscale part of the leaf we, we've done that one we need to look at it this way so have it you know in the same orientation as you're painting handy okay so again this this wet this part of the lobe And again, give it a little bit of margin of overlap with the bigger lobe, which is up here. We've got to give it a bit of margin so that the paint can flow into it and not give us a hard line, okay? So moistening that very gently. Take the moisture out to those tips because we want the paint to flow there. Give a margin for the paint to flow and end up with a soft edge. That should be enough room for it to flow out and give us a soft edge as it did over here, look. Okay, so let's look at this now. Right, there's moisture on. It's a, it's a bit of puddling happening there, so I might wait a couple of seconds, just a few more seconds, for it to soak in a bit more into the fibres of the paper, rather than sitting on the surface. Because we don't want surfacey flooded water, do we? Remember the first few exercises we did when we tried out water um, mixing and consistencies. So remember that, we just need, need to be patient. Let that water go in a little bit more. That's looking better now. That's the sheen you want to look at near a window or by a light. Make sure you look. I've been painting 25 years and I still look and see how wet things are. are, are. So we'll go for uh, that colour that color mix again. And first of all I did a pigmented wash. So I picked up so a moist brush and I picked up some transparent orange pyrrole. I should have put a few more droplets of water on my palette actually. There's that beautiful orange. So that's a pigmented wash. Okay, so I'm going to drop that on now. And this is a different, you know, I'm picking a different colour now because that was, sorry, the permanent alizarin crimson I used there. I'm using the, uh, the orange on this one for a change, okay, for a little bit of <coughs> difference on the leaf. And again, I'm not doing a solid block of colour. I'm letting it bleed naturally here and there. Now into that, let's pick up the permanent alizarin crimson now. So I'm dipping my brush in and getting more of a, vis a viscous mix. This is a bit... Well, actually, no, that's that's more of a pigmented mix, I'd say, okay? There's too much water in there to be called um, a viscous mix. So this is a pigmented mix going in now. And again, I'm looking at my road map and roughly placing the darks, darker areas, with this darker red. Okay. Okay. 
So we've got some contrast there, haven't we? And then finally, I'm going to go for my small brush, my size zero brush, and I've dipped it in the water and I've flicked it because now I'm going to pick up some rose of ultramarine and mix it in to that colour I've just been using. So I've got the darkest, darkest tone now and dropping that in. to the darkest areas I can see on that grayscale image. A little dark bit down there actually, which is quite nice as it uh, fuses the leaf down there. So again, I'm not painting it all over the same, I'm leaving some differentiation. So again, I will leave this dry to completion, but not before I've lifted out. There's a bit of a highlight there, a bit of a paler area there, and maybe a bit there. So let's get our small flat brush again, moisten it, wipe it so that it's clean, and it's now a thirsty brush. And that will help us lift out that highlight And these little contrasts, I'm rinsing my brush again, wiping my brush on the flannel, take out some more of that hot orange. That's my brush there. Rinse again, keep the brush nice and clean. Okay, and I think where else? Yes, there was a little bit of a highlight there, wasn't there? So just take that out. Press that thirsty brush in, rinse it again because each stroke you wipe on will pick up pigment and you want to get rid of that. And then we'll leave that to dry completely. So this is how things are looking at the moment. What I need to say to you now is that the leaves that are in between the rose hips, you know, they are not the star of the show. So we don't have to do a lot of work on those. The foreground leaf has got quite a bit of detail on and we've, you know, we can give that a little bit more detail. So know that, you know, you haven't got to bring every plane of the picture to the same degree of finish because as artists we're trying to create dimension and recession aren't we so we want things to come forward and some things to go backwards and if you give everything the same degree of attention everything's going to come forwards and nothing's going to stay in the back so you lose the opportunity to create recession and depth in your paintings so the good news is we haven't got to do a lot of detail in these uh, leaves that are intertwined between the rose hips. We'll put some more detail on but not tons. What our focus will be on next now is just finishing off those leaves there, a bit of detail. And then we'll start then really trying to pull forward probably this rose hip and this one and a bit more detail on this leaf. This rose hip we can leave because um, uh, I think it's so big I don't want to do too much more detail on that because it will dominate the painting so again it's this discretion as, as an artist you decide what you pull forward what you keep giving more colour and what you keep giving more detail and that which you leave behind so you have to be quite brutal sometimes and um, sacrifice things and leave things in the background and that's what will, will convey um, a more painterly feel into your paintings.